if, if you shoot and it's not on YouTube, did it even happen? No, I'm not sure. It's like there's some kind of a hallucinatory flu going around. specifically IDPA competition and I want to give my review thoughts what have you on this gun as it pertains to competition and general duty use and uh, what I've experienced over the last uh, couple months as I've uh, used and shot this pistol uh, a couple things first I'm gonna jump straight to the end here I'm gonna say if you're here and you're interested in the short version the short version is this is an awesome gun. I don't know why more people don't use it in competition. The slide is light. The trigger can be made really good. The A92A1 has adjustable, not adjustable, but has replaceable sights, which basically uh, corrects any of the major problems or issues that I would have with the Beretta 92FS series uh, for competition. So I really don't understand why this gun isn't more popular. Uh, it's a heavy metal gun, and by heavy I mean it comes in, in the mid-30s range for uh, competition. The G conversion is now readily available, meaning you don't have that over-the-top thing where you accidentally bump on the slide. The mags are cheap. The trigger can be made good. Uh, it's a, uh, one of the criticisms of the Beretta 2 FS, Beretta 92 FS series, is how thick it is. And that's actually a bonus in competition when you want to get a lot of meat. On the gun and you know control recoil they're cheap they're available they run uh, they have a lot of uh, aftermarket um, support and parts at this point and you should go buy one and shoot and compete with it and if that's the short version that you're interested in that's it uh, I'll have some parts down in the description that will be linked to some of the things that I've used for example the grips will be linked uh, and I'm going to try and link out to some of the trigger parts and stuff like that that I've done for this gun. Uh, but yeah, if you want the short and dirty version of it, it shoots great. Go buy one. Compete with it. You'll be happy. It'll mix it up from that regular Glock that you've been shooting. and Or it'll prevent you from having to go buy like a Shadow 2 that's super expensive. These things are just ready, available, and good to go with a small amount of modifications. There. Cool. Now, if you're here for the longer version, let's go into detail a little bit, okay? Um, as this comes from the box, you're probably not going to be super happy with it. And you're probably not going to, I mean, at least I'm not going to be happy with it to go compete with it straight out of the box. The other thing you're going to notice is this thing is super wet. I really just put this into uh, long-term storage, so it's kind of covered in oil. And that's going to be one of the things why it's... Uh, 
uh, looks so wet and uh, has so much oil on it. Um, but yeah, let's break it down. Let's break it down on how do you get a 92A1 that comes from the, out of the box. How do you get it competition ready? First thing you're going to want to do is replace some of the internals. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it comes with a plastic guide rod. You're going to want to replace the plastic guide rod. Not that I have an issue with plastic guide rods, except why not add a little weight to the front end there. Um, and that's what I did. I also replaced the plastic trigger that comes in them now. I replaced that with the metal trigger just for feel, fit, and function. And I replaced the, uh, the small mag release with the oversized mag release. Uh, it really helps me get to that uh, eject the mag out for competition. Other things that have been done to this gun. Dawson Precision front fiber optic sight. These, like the biggest issue I had with the 92 FS series, series was the fixed front sight. This is also going to apply to the 92 X series. Now you can replace the front sight. That is a huge deal for competition shooters. If you don't have the right sight picture, if your ammo doesn't hit at the right spot, you can't use that gun. You need to be able to dial in where the point of aim, point of impact is for your gun and you need to be able to replace the front sight in order to do that. Being able to adjust the rear sight almost gets it done, but maybe you like a skinnier or thicker. That's, that's, now you can do that on the Brettas. From a 92A1 on the 92X series, you can now, those dovetail out. Yes, I know there's a, I'm aware there's some like Vertec versions earlier and Elite models and stuff like that where you were able to do that too. But I'm talking about if you go to the store and you buy a $500 gun, which is the 92A1, you could now replace the front sight. That's an important distinction and reason to buy the 92A1 versus a 92FS, is being able to replace that front sight. Huge. Don't underestimate that. Uh, the second thing I've got is a Wilson Combat uh, U-notch, I think Battle Sight or something called like that. The reason why that's the Battle Sight is because I pretty much have the lowest front sight I can buy from Dawson and the highest rear sight I can buy from Wilson Combat. And you can see I've been hammering on it trying to adjust it. I should have just taken it to my uh, gunsmith. But I tried to do it myself with a brass punch and that's what you get. Um, but this is, uh, let's see if it comes in there. Wilson, rear sight, um, and is the highest rear sight that they have. I think it's the three something whatever. And that's because I like a six, excuse me, a, yeah, six o'clock hold. Uh, I like to shoot ammo that hit uh, above the blade, and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but that's more or less what I've done. I bought the shortest one and got the highest one, and that, that works for me. You're going to have to dial it in yourself later. The other thing I have is a really, really light, uh, I believe it's the 9-pound recoil spring, or whatever, yeah, I think that's it, 9 or 8 recoil spring. I do that because I want this slide to move freely. I like it to come back, hit my hand, and then not cause the front sight to dip when it slams home as it's grabbing this, right? Plus, when it's operating under recoil, you actually have the hammer that needs to be pushed back as well. And so I want the this part to actually be lighter, right? So tune your recoil spring is all I'm getting at. The factory recoil spring is going to be too heavy for competition loads, right? Competition 130 power factor ammunition, nine millimeters, just gonna, it's gonna dip, and then you're gonna have to adjust that. I say either shoot hotter stuff if you buy factory, or replace the recoil spring with something to tune it up for your ammunition if you're a competition shooter. I went to Langdon Tactical LTT and I bought a trigger job in a bag. So what does that all get you? Well, it gets you a sear, it gets you hammer spring, I think it gets you some other internal parts, and it gets you the Elite Hammer, right? So, that takes the, uh, here, let me show you this real quick. So, this gun has a D-spring in it, and I would consider this a pretty good trigger, but this has a D-spring in it, and it's, it's pretty good, it's smooth-ish, and then the single action comes out, and I want you to watch this too, I want you to watch the reset distance here. Because that's going to come up next. So the resets out to here. And then it's a nice crisp. Call it, you know, whatever. But watch this reset one more time. Nice, nice, nice trigger with the D-spring. D-spring is, I think, like 16 pounds, something like that. 
Um, <clears throat> trigger job in a bag comes with, I think, 13 or 12. I'm actually putting an 11 pound spring in this. My double action is so smooth, it just pulls right through. And then the other thing I got from Langdon that people who like 92 FS's should be screaming from the rooftops to buy this for everybody else should be buying this because this is by far the best upgrade that you can make to a 92 FS and it is the optimized trigger bar and it really like I don't know why Wilson Combat still sells a version of a reset bar because this has replaced every other trigger bar in existence so watch this that's it that's your reset All right, compare that versus. Let's see if it'll focus. Focus. Still hadn't reset. There you go. Look at the distance between the back of the trigger and the trigger guard. All right. Versus. Boom. All right, the other one is kind of like resetting out to here. This is right here, and it's already on the wall. So when you're firing competition, that's it. I also replaced the grips. I've got these. These are the ones that will be at the Amazon link down below. These are the cool hand grips. It's kind of like a reverse Wilson Combat. I think like Wilson Combat comes back. This kind of goes towards the gun. I kind of like it better. I don't know, and plus I think they look great. Um... The trigger on this is great. Trigger on this is phenomenal. It's it's smooth, it's light, and it's got a, an amazing reset. You could not ask for any more from a competition trigger than that. You've now so now you've got good sights, you've got an optimized slide movement, you've got some metal parts in here to give it some weight, you've got good grips, uh, and now you've got a great trigger with a great reach set. And, and so and here's the part where if you're gonna talk about any other gun versus the 92FS series. And in this particular instance, we're talking about a 92A1. If you're gonna talk about any other gun, why not just shoot a clock, right? They're reliable, you can put sights on them, they can get pretty good trigger reset. Why would you shoot a Beretta? The reason you shoot a Beretta is because it's missing half the freaking slide, guys. It's missing all this metal. None of this is reciprocating mass. Additionally, not only is half the slide missing and thus causing Less weight and recoil coming back and hitting your wrist. A whole lot less coming back here. Not only that, but it's a fixed barrel system. It's not fixed, but it's got a stationary non-tilting, non-browning action barrel. All right, that barrel stays put. It kind of moves a little bit, but it stays put. So you're not getting the pop. You're not getting the barrel coming up and hitting, and you're not getting all this slide mass hitting your hand too. So. The only thing that happens with this gun is the slide comes back and it just runs like a sewing machine. When you're shooting this, when you're shooting this gun, the only thing you see is you see that coming back at you. That's about it. I mean, it's super easy to keep on target. I, I, don't, I don't know why this gun is not more popular than it is. And more people should shoot them because they're readily available. Like anytime someone recommends a Glock to you, be like, well, why not just shoot a you know 92A1 or 92X series because they're phenomenal guns. Mags, I think this is a 17 rounder that comes with it. With the 92A1, they come with three 17 round mags depending on the package. I'm not going to guarantee that, but they come with this uh, plastic base pad. You can still get the um, shock bottle version from Stager Pro Shop. I have three of those. This one's, again, it's long-term storage and the mags are separate from it, but it's going to hold 10 for IDPA or production, USPSA. Another really awesome feature of this gun, um, in, an, in a slide lock situation, which for competition, that doesn't happen a lot for USPSA. For IDPA, it basically happens every stage. For a slide lock situation, it ergos on this gun, 
Bang, 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 bang. Reload, come here. My thumb can easily hit that slide release lever. And just like a Glock, I can be rebuilding my grip and already drop the slide down on that new fresh mag without having to come up here like a 1911. Right? It's there. It's reachable from, for people with normal, medium-sized hands like myself. That just happens. Right? It's great. Great positioning of that slide. Like, and it still stays out of the way or in your normal shooting, right? Here's what's shooting. Here's how you drop it. You still have to reach for it, but normal shooting, it stays out of the way. But if you need to get to it, it's there. It's there. But you're not going to keep it pinned down all the time like a SIG 226 or a Glock or something where you have to kind of like kick that thumb out a little bit. Now, you can leave it right there up against the gun, and it's not going to stay down, and the gun will actually lock back when it's supposed to. Um, criticisms. Okay, so I've talked about how amazing this gun is and how I don't understand why more people don't shoot. Criticisms. Here we go. You ready? You really can't mill it for an optic. Okay, it's not set up for an optic. That's kind of a bummer. Despite being able to adjust the front and rear sight, it still took me a long time to find a combination that I liked. Other criticisms, um, if you detail strip a Beretta, it's got a lot of small parts and springs. It's completely doable, but it's got a lot of thing. You, you just need to have practiced it. That's pretty much it. And, and the grips, like the trigger bar is external to the gun. I guess that's a criticism. Like you can maybe accidentally get some grips that rub up against the trigger bar, things like that. Um, other criticisms is if you really want to dial it in for a competition, you are going to have to put a couple hundred dollars worth of parts in it. The G conversion is something you have to buy separate. I don't understand why you buy a safety decocker or yeah, safety decocker version. I don't know why you would ever want this to stay down. In competition setting or personal setting, but that's me personal. So you got to put a G conversion in it. The 92X series are being sold G version already. With, with really heavy grain ammo, I found it really easy to get my thumb up against the slide a little bit and cause a malfunction or bump the slide release. Like negatives. Another negative. The trigger does take some getting used to. Uh, even as fine as this trigger is, it's I'm still not as accurate with this trigger as I am with some of my other guns. Mainly because I haven't put the time into this gun. And so, just be aware, for whatever reason, the trigger's a little different, and you got to spend a little time with it to get it to be really dialed in. And I, I think that's true of probably most guns. I just really noticed it on this one. And I, it's probably because I, I went from a gun that had a really, really, really crisp single action to another gun that had a really, really crisp single action. And then I came back to this gun, and it, it's just how this trigger breaks a little different. I think it's that it's just weird, and I would have to spend a bit more time with it to really get my points down and hits better in a competition setting than what I was getting with it. And that's just on me. I haven't, I didn't put the spend the time to do that, and uh, so I, I don't knock that as a gun gun issue. Uh, I guess your buddies might make fun of you for shooting a Mel Gibson gun from the eighties. Um, I don't know, man. That's it. I love this gun. I think it's great. I just don't have the time to really put into it to get that get that dialed in, and so I'm moving on to other guns. That's me personally. Uh, I think these are really, really great firearms, and more people should shoot them. So, yeah. That is my review. Thanks, guys. It's like there's some kind of hallucinatory thing. Stay awake. Also be taking out snowy back.